What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Rain Slick 4. Today we continue our adventures through the under, or not the under hell in fact, but the over hell. So let's see what this fellow is all about. These fellows, in fact. Friendly neighbor of doom. And once again, these enemies do not have all that much health. So as you can see, I've switched up my party a little bit. So we're gonna give this a little bit of a shot. I gave uh, Nigirichu here back to Moira because I figured it makes sense for not random battles, but like the normal enemies to focus on getting attacks out quickly so I can hopefully end battles a little bit quicker. So basically I've focused on AoE here. I also assigned the Scream Cone to Hestia and gave him the Talismans so that hopefully he should be able to contribute to the AoE a little bit as well. And actually on that note, let's put Catsby in there I think. And then... Hestia... And Yeti Scarf. So that should be a decent amount of aqua boosting. Uh, he should also benefit from the Scream Cone's headache. And he should start off with enough MP to cast Blizzard on round one. So, yeah. What the heck is that? Gain an extra MP every, each turn. Well, that's handy. You know, I'm just gonna try this with my setup, see how well it works. He really does not have all that much health, so with any luck, he should go down pretty quickly. Well, wind is clearly not the answer here. Nor is water. Which is unfortunate, because all of my things do water damage. Well, that interrupt's not gonna work. Well, I'm gonna try and make this work anyways. Because I'm stubborn like that, apparently. None of these guys are using Jim, so I don't have the ability to use Icker. Hmm. Well, one way or another, this shouldn't take too long. Even with his resistances, he should go down pretty quickly. Not as quickly as I would like, but it really shouldn't take long thanks to the boosted MP generation, which should allow me to use my good attacks pretty quickly. I'm really whiffing these interrupts, though. Not even a thousand damage. Okay, this time I've got you. Yeah, interrupt. In your face. And this time he should die. Not an especially hard boss. But I guess it probably wasn't really designed to be one. That looks like a Cthulhu statue. So, is this still just the overhell? I was kind of hoping this... Is that Cthulhu in a beret? A Cthulhu mime in a beret? Okay. Ooh. Well that seems like something I want to give to Vendor. Where'd it go? Where is it? Trench coat. That looks like a Shrine Maiden. Three of them, in fact. 
Well, they should not have much life left in them. I don't know why this area is so easy. But... I'll not complain. Hmm... You know... Maybe if that's... The case, then I guess I should probably use give him the amp? And I'll give him the trench coat. More Shrine Maidens! Because apparently doubling them will make them more effective. Even though it definitely won't do that at all. Because they have like no HP. Oh, well, whatever. I just can't help but feel that things are going to get really hard all of a sudden on me here. 20,000 dollars. Well, before we go over there, let us see what is down this path here. Well, there's a chest, so I guess that answers that question. Okay. AOE. All the AOEs. Mana burn. That's unfortunate. I don't know who's thought that that ability was a good idea, but it really does not work in this type of game. Nigiri 2, gain a level! But just, like, just the way that MP works in this game, the MP burn mechanic is just such a dumb idea. I mean, I guess if you want to dick over your players, then yeah, sure, it works, but... It's not an interesting... I don't know. I guess it might be... Incorrect if I were to say it's not an interesting mechanic, but like it doesn't really do anything except for aggravate people. Like, what, what kind of situation are you going to use it in where it isn't just going to be like, yeah, that ability that you used, you're just not going to use it this time. And, like, it's basically like you might as well just stun them. It's worse than most stuns, because if you stun a person, they still eventually use their attack. If you take away their MP, they just don't get to do that attack, and they have to wait until their next uh, command turn comes around again. So... Hmm. Actually, I wonder. Is that... I think I might actually do that. It's going to reduce his strength, but increase all of his other stats. And he's not going to be taking periodic damage from the Axe Axe anymore, so... That seems like a good idea to me. Demonic Shrine Maidens! They shouldn't take a whole lot more to kill than... the normal Shrine Maidens. Although they are resistant to wind, apparently. Unfortunately, it didn't do much for them. Lots of bridges. Demonic Templars, oh man. What'd that say? Well, these guys have a little bit more health, but... They really shouldn't survive past this turn one way or another. Or they could be weak to both wind and water, and just die almost instantly. 120,000. I'm only keeping track of this because I'm assuming that with a lot of money, the uh, coin spew... Where'd it go? Coin spew will do a ton of damage, but I don't know that for a fact, so... Well, the ground seems to be growing horns, so that can't be good. These battles, though, like... I just don't get... If this is supposed to be... 
the final area of the game. I just don't get why these battles are so easy. Interesting. Like, maybe it's just because I've technically done all the hardest stuff already, but... I don't know. Huh? Oh. Okay, uh... Well, it's a robe. So, does that... I mean, how does that work for passives? Does he not get either passive, or does he get both passives, or what? I think I'll leave that to him, though. Do, 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 do. That's a big green thing. Corrupted Coriander. Another enemy with almost no health. This is just getting ridiculous. Well, at least that one seemed like it was specifically designed to not be a hard fight at all. So I guess I'll give him that one. I just have to check, like... Did I accidentally change the difficulty or something? No, it says veteran. That's a good point. Hmm. This is a pretty normal sound. Okay, I guess these are supposed to be the remnants of the old... Not the old, but the... The gods. Okay. Well, let's just try our current strategy, see how well it works out. Because it really doesn't seem like they have all that much health. It's somewhat of a recurring theme, isn't it? I guess maybe what's down to is the game just isn't designed for you to be able to do like 8,000 damage with a single AoE. That's, I guess that might be more the case than any of the other things that I've been saying. I mean, this is apparently a boss, and yet, I've killed at least one of them purely from AoE. Uh, let's actually use Wasabi. Although, they are starting to do a little bit of damage to me here. Just gonna keep AoEing, because why not? They shall die! And they died. Alright then. And once again, that was pretty darn easy. Maw of the Year, huh? Well, okay then. This appears to be some form of mouth. Grand finale. Maybe this place will have harder battles. That appears to be a giant tongue that leads to nowhere. 
Sentient Pus. Well, I don't seem to have much more by way of health. But not anymore. Hey look, another mouth. A mouth inside of a mouth? What is this madness? Hey look, a chest. Big book of staves. And yet it's an orb. Well, I, well, it does increase his speed. So I guess what I'll do is equip that and... See if that does anything to how my passive abilities function. Because I'm very curious. But in the meantime, we must head back this way because I spotted a chest. He does appear to start at 2 MP. What are you gonna do with no mitochondria, demon mouth? I'm honestly not sure why the Scream Cones Blizzard does so little damage. I mean, I guess he only has 360 magic, it's not that high. So, how much MP should Nigirichu start with? He should start with 2. So I guess that does mean that he's getting the benefit of both passive abilities from books and staves. So, I guess that opens up another How to Kill book. Uh, <laughs> Not that I have anyone else to use it. Well, that was a disappointing chest. Not as disappointing as that mimic. The vegan mimic. Onwards through the innards of the demon. Giant foot. Tsunami! Squish. Haha, <laughs> their feet. And another chest. They're just throwing gold at us left, right, and center. For some reason. I mean, I'm not gonna complain if the coin spew thing ends up actually being good, then it'll actually be quite a good thing to have so much money, but... Like, I, I guess I can, can't imagine there being a, any other reason for them throwing this much money at us, like... I'm assuming that there won't be any more shops. Nikirichu, more magic for you! More magic! More magic! Hmm. Uh-oh. Well, that doesn't seem good. 50,000 HP, huh? Well, let's give this thing a shot. I'm gonna start off with Wasabi, because this is, like, serious mode here. And the Scream Cone's actually going to just... Bend. Ow. Okay, well... Actually, no. I'll s I want to switch Caspi out. I'm going to switch him for Vendor. And let's see how much damage Drown does. Not too shabby! 
Okay. Uh. Yeah, sure. Let's transfer my MP to Bender. I could transfer it over to Nigirichu to just use another Drown, but I'm very curious how much damage this coin thing actually does. Apparently he has enough for another Drown anyways. Okay, Coin Spew. Eh. 9,000 damage. I mean, I guess it's pretty good, yeah. But it's not, like, super massive. So... Looks like there's a path on the right. And there... is a pass off, path on the left. So we will... Explore one or both of those pens on the next episode of Let's Play Rain Slick 4. Catch you later!